Okay, folks, it's just about the top of the hour. We thank you for joining us today for the um, Do Journalism with Impact uh, Digital Cafe portion. I think we have what is a very, very interesting and cool tool for you to use and um, uh, something that hopefully you will use more moving forward on your big project stuff, which is obviously what this Do Journalism with Impact is all about. So thank you for joining us. Um, I will say, as always, if you have registered for this, if you are in this right now, and I see there's about 30 or so folks who are already on right now, and you have to leave, we record the whole thing. We'll send it to you after. And in the future, if you ever want to um, to get this refresher, just say, hey, Tim, remember the, uh, the thing that Tyson did about Architect? I'd love to see that video again. Drop me an email, and I will forward it along to you. But without further ado... The inventor, how fun is it that you're like the inventor <laughs> of this platform <clears throat> thing that we have? I, I realize it's not inside of WordPress, but something that we're going to use and we have been using already uh, corporate wide. Mm-hmm. Tyson yeah, it, Bird, who's fun. from the innovation team. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. I'm really excited to be here today and tell you guys about this tool. We've had about nine different newsrooms use it already. Um, they've all been very successful. We had a really great beta testing group that we worked with, and now we've seen it in the wild a couple times and so far 100 percent of people who've used it have really thought it was a great platform for doing their big impact journalism so uh i just want to go over what i'm going to cover today first i want to give you a couple of options for publishing your special digital projects like tim talked about i'm mainly going to focus on the platform that me and my team developed which is called architect but there are a couple of other ways that you can publish very special things online Um, But again, mostly what I'm going to cover is what's available on our Gatehouse project platform known as Architect, and then how to get started with that and what you can expect. So first, I want to cover a a couple of options that you have when you've done some really neat journalism, when you've done something outside of the usual beats and your usual coverage. Uh, A very simple one, actually, is a keyword that already exists in Edit UI in the placement. You can use uh, Breaking News Enhanced. And you've probably seen that or maybe you've used it once or twice. What that does is it adds this nice banner to the top of your page and you can include related links. So if you've got a YouTube link in there, if you've got a podcast link, you can kind of create this little package that sits at the top of the pages. Uh, and that that's a nice way, you know, again, if you've done something kind of out of the ordinary, if you want a little a special display, you can use that and it's right in Edit UI. Just a couple of other examples from around the industry that I noticed uh, actually just this week that I thought were pretty cool. This documentary type promo video, and uh, there's a link in the slides that Tim will send out. But I thought this was cool. BuzzFeed News had a really long investigative piece actually from last year about a mother who essentially lied to everyone in the community about her daughter having special needs. And again, they published it in 2016. I remembered reading it in 2016, but then it came up in my Facebook feed just the other day because they had sort of repackaged it as this maybe four minute long Facebook documentary type video. But what was cool about it is you didn't get the whole story from the video. It was like very clearly a promo. So in this four minute promo, they talked about some of the main characters, some of the issues, and then it was like for the whole story, go to BuzzFeed News. And I went back and reread it because I, I, like I said, I knew I had read it, but that video was so captivating. I wanted to see the whole thing. So that's another way that, you know, you may think, well, we've done this big thing. How can we make it really special on social media? I think that is a, an opportunity is to cut a little promo video to put on social media. And that actually does partner well with the architect platform that you could really drive a lot of traffic to your special project page. And then the other way is to actually tell the story on social media. And I think that ProPublica does this really well. Uh, they, they're really good about, you know, starting a thread on Twitter, you know, one of two of three of, and, uh, they, they sort of engage people in multiple steps. And that could be cool too. If you've produced a series and maybe you have it online as several stories, you know, you could create a, a Twitter thread or maybe Facebook and then Facebook comments. That would be a way that you could actually tell the story right on social media. By the way, did I miss these questions? I snuck out as I was making sure that things were being properly recorded uh, Sarah, did you answer both of these or talk about them? Sarah says breaking news enhanced is also available in news cycle content, AKA media Aware center. And then Maria asks, do external related links, YouTube or podcast, as Tyson said, display in breaking enhanced position. Now they never did before. Oh yeah. Let me clarify that Maria. You actually do have to create a story file with those elements and then you link the story files in the breaking news enhanced position. So it all would live inside of edit UI. It's not sending people actually to YouTube. Um, but on the architect directions, there's actually steps for using that keyword. 
Uh, then, and I have to shout out to Rachel Kilroy in Columbus. She's been working with me on that because she's much more of an edit UI person than I am. Uh, but there is a way that you can have multiple pieces of content appear in that box. But I know that, yes, it, you do have to create story files for each of those. Good questions. Thank you for those. So in addition to these three tips, you know, it's like, no, 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 these are cool. We've done that before. We've done something really big and we want to share it in a way that makes it clear that it's really big. So I'd like to introduce you guys to this gatehouse built entirely in-house tool called Architect. So it's, it's backbone is in WordPress, which I think a lot of people are already familiar with. A lot of newsrooms that we've worked with, they say, oh yeah, it's so-and-so on staff has worked in WordPress before. Um, I'm actually going to a WordPress conference fairly soon, and they like to say that actually 60% of the internet is based in WordPress. It's the most popular open source publishing platform. And it also is just really easy to work in. It has a really nice, clean, sort of editor-driven interface. And I think if you've worked in Edit UI or MediaWare Center, you'll be very familiar with the tools that you have available. But the key thing here that's really awesome, and the, the reason that we're so excited to have this tool internally here in Gatehouse, is that our platform plays well with your existing Google Analytics tags as well as your DFP advertising tags. So a, a lot of times a point of friction is that you may have invested a lot of resources in some great journalism and it just doesn't really fit within the CMS. You don't want to jump externally and have this somewhere where you can't get your analytics in one place or you don't know how to pull your ads in there. So this platform is sort of an all-in-one solution completely inside of the, uh, the gatehouse environment and DFP is called double click for publishers. So that's the Google ad platform that serves our remnant advertising on sites. So, and I'll get into this a little more later, but you can use your ad keywords if you want. Otherwise your, the proper ad slots can be placed into an architect site and it'll match with your site URL. And thank you, Gene, for the question. If anybody else has something that, you know, sometimes Tyson is so smart that he forgets that the rest of us don't know what all this means. <laughs> Yes, please just drop that question in the chat box and we'll make sure we get it answered. Jean sent me an email at the same time that she asked you a question on this That's webinar. That's funny. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry, Awesome. Um, and again, I, I just want to give a little shout out here. Uh, Dak Lee, who's in Sarasota, he now is a developer with Gatehouse Corporate. But when he was working just for the Herald Tribune, he put a lot of work into this platform and he was really sort of the brains behind getting this connection in between your regular newspaper.com site and being able to pull those very important tags into a special project. So who is this for? I, I, again, I, we, we run into the issue of, oh, well, we're not really sure how to do that, or we don't have somebody who codes. You know, we're, we're just getting by in Edit UI. We've built this platform to be easy for everybody. Um, and I was really excited to see, actually, that Nick Dumont is on the call today because Nick has always been a person that we've tested things with here with the Innovation Studio and Scent because I know that Nick has a ton of digital skills and he's mm -hmm. built some really cool projects in the past. And I'm not going to say it was easy to get Nick to jump to Architect, but I will say that when he did, he, he wrote back to us and he said, it's clear that this platform is perfect for people like him who have a lot of experience, who can develop websites themselves, but it also is built for somebody who's never done it before. But you know that just, you know, you, you want to assemble a wide photo with a block of text underneath. And sometimes the traditional CMS just doesn't cut it. So I, I think Nick is a great example of somebody on very much the, experienced with web and but again we built this platform for everybody so this long list who's it for this is not an inclusive list there is plenty more uh, that we think this would apply to but the thing that we really want to emphasize about architect is that it has to be used for your special projects it has to be used for this journalism with impact if you're using it for your regular sunday packages it just loses that interest from the reader where they go wow I, this is unlike anything I've ever seen from right. this newspaper. You know, it, you want to reserve it for maybe the two or three times a year when you've really invested the resources, you've shot the video, shot the photo, done the web embeds. <clears throat> that that's when you want to use this platform. It's something that's that's really your journalism with impact, so that it looks like that. And that's why we paired it with this in terms of the uh, the theme this month, because this is the, these are the pieces for Inner Circle that we're planning in that planning document. And the big one each quarter or, or once a year or, you know, whatever it is, that's when you use this. That's right. And uh, Maria, I see your question there to explain a little more on the ad side. So as I'll get into in a minute, uh, Architect comes with a collection of these different widgets that you actually just drag and drop onto the page to assemble how you want it to look. And you have a widget option for the rectangular. I think it's a 350 by something. I can't remember the exact size, but there's that rectangular ad slot. And then there's a leaderboard wide rectangle ad slot. 
So both of those are widgets that you can drag into your special project. And yes, they pull all of the ad tags from your newspaper.com site automatically. You don't have to do anything else on your end. The only thing that you can do is there is a slot if your ads folks want to use a particular ad keyword for this project, you can put that keyword in there, but it'll pull them in based on the information on your newspaper.com. So I want to show a couple of examples here. Um, again, we built this for newsrooms large and small. We've seen some really, really cool work come out of this. Um, Columbus has done a couple of projects. I think this is a great example just showing, you know, when you can do that full width, full browser photo with text over it, I mean, that's just an experience that you can't get inside of the normal CMS. <clears throat> but you see it everywhere on these big journalism projects. Uh, we worked with Ames, Iowa, actually, on two projects. They did one that was just in Ames and one that was across Iowa. I think this does a great job of showing, uh, you know, they have this text block here on the left paired with some graphics on the right. You know, that again is something that's really not easy to replicate on your standard page, but boy, did that make an impact on their reporting. Daytona here on the right, I wanted to show kind of how nicely Architect collapses to a mobile size. So this was a, a project that they built about a, a highway near Daytona. And, you know, you can see it collapses really nicely into a small view. You still get that full bleed photo. You got the nice headline there, text styling that's a little bit outside of what we normally see on the CMS. Again, here's Nick from Gastonia. He customized it a great deal. This is something that you can do, but you don't have to do. You know, he's using a, a unique background color and a little bit different type, and he's got some icons up in the corner. It's completely expandable, and that's really the beauty of WordPress is that if you've got the skills or the interest to do a little bit more digitally, you absolutely can on this platform, and our team is here to support you. And if you want to inject a, a little bit of CSS or you want to change the colors or type around, we can absolutely work with that. And then finally here, Topeka, they did a very nice investigation into sort of the timeline after Brown v. Board. Um, and I wanted to show because this is just a Tableau visualization that they created there in Topeka. They're the experts. They got in all the data. And then in one line of code, they were able to put it into Architect. And just very quickly right now, as we're giving this presentation, you can't click on those links. However, when the webinar is concluded, I'll send you the slides, and then you will be able to click through to all five of these projects from here. And by the way, I should mention Columbus, our biggest newsroom, Daytona, one of our biggest newsrooms, Ames, Iowa, who Tyson said has already pushed out two projects via this platform, less than a dozen folks in that newsroom. So like you said, this is for everyone. It's for everyone, absolutely. So the next thing I'm going to do is kind of go through the, the widgets and the tools that are available to you in the Architect platform. This is something that we worked on a lot, you know, because I think there's a lot of tools out there for journalists and a lot of them claim to be, oh, this is your end all solution for special digital projects. We did each of these widgets with a lot of intention and a lot of back and forth with our beta group because we want to offer you the tools to create really special projects, but we don't want this to be the kitchen sink. We want each of these pieces to really drive the storytelling and really improve the work that you've done without having a bunch of clutter in the way that you have to figure out, is this the right tool for this? Is this the right widget here? So again, I want to emphasize the fact that this is entirely WordPress based. So if there are certain things that you think, oh, this story absolutely needs a, a share button, like a, a Facebook share button, and that's something that Columbus always wants, you can grab a WordPress plugin for free off the internet, install it onto your architect platform, and then you can have that. And, and our team will work with you on adding those kinds of things. But I'm going to go over just the things that are included with architect. Everything is built in. It's styled for you. And the placement is dependent on where you put it in this drag and drop interface. So it essentially is a little form that you fill out. So for example, the first thing here, full width image, text, and video widgets. So what you would be seeing in your WordPress editor is you would click and open a media gallery and you would choose your image. You would type in a form field for the headline. You would type in a form field for the subhead. And you would type in a form field for the byline. And then it would display on, on the website as you see right here in the screenshot. So we've done all the styling and all the placement for you. You just sort of sort of move around these Lego pieces that build the actual presentation. So we've got full width images, text and video. This is something that was asked for a lot just because I know that the standard CMS doesn't do it well to have those images and videos go all the way to the edge of the screen. That's a big feature of Architect. The other thing is the sticky sidebar. And if you click through to the examples after this, you can see kind of how it functions. As you scroll on desktop and read the text here on the left side, these items on the right side stay with you. So what you do, and again, I'll get more into the architect editor. 
is you create your text block and you have a side-by-side -side pairing. So in the architect editor, you would put your text block onto the left side. And then on the right side, you have options to do an image, to do a video, to do a pull quote, to do a subscribe button, to add a custom embed like a Tableau or an Omni, anything you want. You put it into that right side and then the platform knows that these two are a pair. So as you scroll through that section of text, you see the image the whole time. And we think that is really a key feature because a lot of times, you know, you've invested a lot of photography or videography resources into this. And as people are reading, they might not know, oh, is now the time that I should watch the video? Is now the time to look at this photo? They stay with you as you read so you can get a really rich experience looking at the photo or pause reading, watch the video, and then continue scrolling. Uh, we think this is a really cool reading experience. On mobile, everything stacks in a little bit more traditional way. So you would see the photo and then you'd scroll through the text and you would see the next thing. Uh, it's a little bit more traditional experience. The other thing I want to touch on here is that we did not include a traditional photo gallery widget with this. And again, I want to thank our beta group who was working with Architect because they had a lot of feedback on this. But the thing we've seen is that users really don't like clicking through a gallery. And on mobile, it can be a very frustrating experience when you've got a stack of images or a little arrow key that you have to try to hit. It doesn't work well. And I think we've all seen the success of moving to a vertical photo gallery format on our newspaper.com sites. So what we've done in Architect is we don't have a gallery widget. Instead, what we have is just these full width images or the paired images that can go next to stories, next to the text block. So if you have, say, three or four photos that you want to display in a row, you could put them in there as full width images and the readers would scroll just like they do on the long scroll vertical galleries. We also have a great looking uh, sort of a hero image. So you can do a full width photo at the top with some text over the top of it as sort of a landing page or the top of your story. And then uh, that's an example of sort of the traditional text layout. Again, we wanted to find something that was really elegant and clearly displays to your readers. This is a special project. We've taken it outside of our normal newspaper.com and done something really unique with it. And then again, ads, and this is completely up to you. This is included as a widget. If you want to drag and drop ads in there, you can. You can place ads into that sticky side if you want to. You can do a leaderboard ad at the top. You can do a leaderboard ad at the bottom. You have control over where the ads are placed in your presentation, and that's something you can work with in your local market. And uh, it, you are in complete control. Renee, to your question about setting up an architect affects how it looks in print. Architect exists completely outside of the news cycle edit UI MediaWare system. Um, so it, it has no effect in print at all. I will say when you do request the architect site setup from my team, if you are a CND newspaper, when you request that, uh, the, the directors here at the CND also receive an email to know that you're working on a special project. So that kind of gives everyone involved a heads up that something special is coming and you might be able to coordinate a print presentation. Um, but the architect interface works completely outside of news cycle. And for that reason, yes, you do have to actually put content into two places. So you'll have to keep track of your content in either Edit UI, MediaWare Center, and you'll have a copy inside of WordPress. Um, but we like to think of that actually as more of an advantage because this can be something that, you know, maybe there's some special inclusions or additional information that exists online that's not part of the print package and doesn't have to be tied to the same story file. And then again, a great thing about WordPress is the number of plugins that are available online. When I made this presentation, there's 55,731 of them. I'm that, sure there's it? even more. <laughs> I'm sure there's more today. I did it a couple <laughs> days ago. Um, but just as an example, these are the share buttons that Columbus has been using on their projects. It's not something that's built in natively to Architect, um, but they really like having the share buttons on there. So they found a plugin that they just install into WordPress, and then it becomes a widget just like everything else that they drag and drop. So widgets, placement, I'm, I'm talking a mile a minute. This, I think, this screenshot kind of helps understand what it actually will look like when you go in to create your site. So you'll be given a login from my team that'll give you the web address that you'll go to and then the editor address that you'll work from. But the creation interface is completely drag and drop. So you'll see up here at the top, there's our text and image hero. We've done a full width text widget underneath. And then this kind of shows that pairing. So on the left side, I have a block of text. On the right side, I have a sidebar widget. That could be an image, that could be a video, that could be a pull quote, something that goes side by side as I scroll through. 
And down here at the bottom, we see that there's a custom HTML. That could be something like a Tableau or an Omni embed. Or again, if you, if you have someone on your staff who is really interested in web development, they could piece that together themselves and sort of just inject it into the architect interface. But it's totally drag and drop. The exact order that you appear right here on the on the WordPress editor with the hero at the top, the text, and then the side by side, that's exactly how it will appear online. And then uh, let's see, Rob, your question about WordPress Gutenberg right now, no, it's actually using the um, it's page builder, um, but we are really excited about the upcoming release of WordPress Gutenberg, and we're going to transition Architect over into Gutenberg. That's one of the things I'm really hoping to get out of my WordPress conference, in fact, is how to work with that. Hmm. Um, Nancy, can you preview before publishing? Yes. Um, so it has the same WordPress publishing controls. You can password protect something for a while if you want to. You can do a preview of it. You can send a preview link out, and then when it's actually published, it's live. And a good question from Craig, who's in um, Delaware around uh, Dover with the six different sites that they have. Can you have multiple URLs? Actually, you can. Um, and that's something that I want to, let's see where I cover that. Well, we'll get to but it. We'll no get problem. to it. Yeah. yeah so that's I, a good question. Craig. That's a, we'll it's a great question. That. And it works actually better than I think you might expect. Um, again, with the beauty of pulling in the analytics and the ad tagging, there's a very simple way for us to syndicate across sites. So here we go. The best part, <clears throat> again, is just that those analytics and the ads work out of the box. There is nothing that you have to do to make those work. It's all built in and easy. There's an optional ad tag. If your ad folks want to be targeting a certain keyword, they can do that. And then the super easy syndication. I included this screenshot over here. I'm looking at the Google Analytics as the Columbus Dispatch, and you can see I'm seeing these Gatehouse News slash sites, <clears throat> and those are built in Architect. So to sort of answer that question, Craig, down here, gatehouse news slash site name slash home and then site newspaper.com. This is what an architect finished published URL looks like. So everything will start with gatehouse news.com forward slash the site name will be whatever your project is. So some of those examples, we had A1A, we had Iowa Mental Health, we've had Kyle Snyder, you know, something that just a quick tagline for your project. Home is the page. And then this forward slash site and forward slash newspaper.com, that is the magic sauce that brings in those variables from your newspaper.com. So it pulls in the Google Analytics and it pulls in the advertising tags and then it injects those into the story. And what's awesome is that everything that you've done to actually build these projects is all contained within the gatehouse news forward slash site name. So you don't have to rebuild something multiple times if you want to share it across multiple sites. And actually, we had an example of this uh, in sort of a small market with Iowa because the Iowa Mental Health Project was syndicated across all of the Iowa sites. And so all they had to do was change this newspaper.com URL at the end to be any one of their, so it could be amestrib.com, I think Moline is one, you know, they were able to just swap that in and out. And we can do the same thing on the national level. And we actually did this with uh, some of the Eclipse content that came from more content now. So any newspaper.com that we put here in the end that is what analytics tags and what advertising tags will be called for the project display. So Craig, if you if you want more info, please drop it in the chat box, but I think that answers your question. So what you would do is if there was one story that, that made sense for each of the Delaware newspapers, you would build it only one time in Architect. You'd get the gatehousenews.com slash big news in Delaware, and then you would do slash site, and then you could do each of those properties as the newspaper.com at the end. So you'd share it on Facebook with those different URLs and uh, and it would pull in the correct tags. Deb, to your question about national projects, uh, there's actually a call, I think, is that next week, Tim, that's going to be talking about a couple national data projects? Yeah, on uh, Monday we have two national data projects and actually we have uh, information about the webinar at the end of this session. Um, and the one is about midwives and the other is about outstanding warrants. And both of those will be pushed out via this platform, correct? And will be then backslash yournewspaper.com site so that um, it'll be on your, with your branding and everything else. That's right. Um, so again, I'm, this is really, I think, the feature that sets Architect apart from other maybe special project platforms that are out there. This is totally for Gatehouse. It was built for our newspapers. 
And it makes it really easy. You know, if you're the Columbus Dispatch and this is only going to be a dispatch project, then you would only ever use the URL gatehouse news slash Kyle Snyder home site dispatch.com. But if you wanted to syndicate this out to a multiple different newsrooms and multiple different properties, it's as easy as swapping out that newspaper.com to be the correct website. So how do you begin? If you go to dspace.design forward slash architect, uh, what we've done is published a checklist of kind of things you'll need when you feel like you're ready to jump in and start working on this. On there is a Google form. Again, when you fill that out, it's going to ask you some questions about when are you going to publish it? What are some keywords for the project? Who's going to be the contact person? It will ask you if you are a C&D newspaper and if this will also be print. If it's digital only, no problem. Um, and then once you've submitted that form and emails, everybody on my team we will get the site set up for you right away and email you the login details to start building. Also on dspace.design slash architect, there are some examples of sites out in the wild, as well as a detailed description of each widget on here. And then about a 20 minute video of me, it's like a screen recording of me actually building a site. Um, so if this seems very sort of pie in the sky, high level to you, there's one where I actually walk through, all right, we'd drag this widget here, we type in this field, this is what it'll look like. Uh, a couple more questions here. Caitlin, are they You designed? just answered the second one from Sarah, but go ahead. Oh yes, I yeah. did. Um, <laughs> are they designed for projects rolled out one at a time or sort of over days and weeks? That's a good question. Um, that is something that we've talked about a little bit. If you look analytically, people really don't return to special projects. They hear about it or see it on social media once. So we really emphasize that it's a better practice if you've got sort of a five-day series that you're running in print to publish all at once online Mm -hmm. just so all the content is there and then people can sort of read it at your leisure. If it's something where a time delay is really important, what you can do, uh, if you saw in those screenshots, you can create a menu at the top Mm -hmm. of your site and then you would just add the links day by day. So a day one link, day two link, and that could all live inside of the architect thing. uh, No extra extra time required. And Ron from Utica asking how long would the average story take to build? So let's say the Ames, the Greek life Ames, Iowa project, what would that have roughly taken in terms of uh, build time? That one, I want to say it was a week, uh, but that's, you know, it's not like they spent eight hours, five, you know, for yeah. five days building it. It was like, I think we sent them all the login details on maybe a Monday and then they published it Friday or Saturday. So, sure. uh, you know, it bit by bit and there was some emailing back and forth, but, and it says on dspace.design kind of a, a suggested timeline for how long you should have, but I would give yourself at least a week to piece it together. Again, it, you're not going to take the entire 40 hour no. week building it, right. um, but just so that, you know, you can test how things look and you can get the copy in there. The actual building, if you've used WordPress before, I mean, you could knock it out in an hour, right. um, but Yeah, I I wouldn't plan on a ton of time, but definitely give yourself, you know, if you need to contact my team, that's and that's the key there. Having that whole week that allows for an email exchange if something isn't working properly, we're looking through things, right? Sure, absolutely, good answer. Thank you for the question, Ron. Yeah. So that's really all I've got. Uh, Again, dspace.design/slash/architect is where all the information is, as well as a little bit more detailed info about each widget and a video screen grab of me explaining it as well as links to projects out in the wild. I also would say, um, you know, the newsroom cited in these examples, Ames, Daytona, Columbus, these people have all, in my experience, been very pro and positive about architect. I'm sure they would be more than happy to answer a question from newsroom to newsroom. Um, but you can always reach out to my team and the, the contact info is also there at dspace.design. Going back to something that Deb had asked, here is the training on Monday. If you haven't heard of this yet, you should sign up. We're doing some national data projects with um, Emily Lacaz's team on uh, outstanding warrants state by state and also midwives. They're very interesting projects, and she's going to walk through in two 30-minute sessions, so over one full hour, how they're putting these together together how you can localize them, how you can contribute, how you can use the projects in their entirety. It's a really interesting presentation. And as as always, just sign up and then basically, oh, look at that, Nicole, saying, did someone on your team make the architect logo? Because it's cool. <laughs> Thanks, she's, Nicole. She's kissing up. Thank <laughs> it was you, also me. But uh, <laughs> yes. Um, but sign up for that. And, uh, and that way, um, if you register, you'll get that whole uh, training on Monday. Uh, we'll follow up with that. And by the way, the theme for August, and thank you to Tyson for finishing up um, 
uh, this this month, which was uh, was do journalism with impact. But for next month, it's SEO training, and I'm telling you, there's some great things in there. David Stone, who formerly worked with Cox and now is with us here at Gatehouse, is going to talk you through some tips and tricks that really help to make your content zing. So um, uh, I will make sure that uh, everybody gets an invite for that. And yes, Ron, I'll send you an invite for the Monday webinar. I will also say one more quick thing because I so appreciate Deb's point. We are trying to work toward better national project planning and um, and coordinating. So for example, and I'm, and I'm eager to see this, but uh, folks from the Eugene, Oregon newspaper are on. I think we're going to have a project from them in a couple of weeks about the 40-year anniversary of the release of the movie Animal House, which was shot almost entirely in Eugene, Oregon on the University of Oregon campus. And we're going to try to put something together in this platform that then will push out nationally in about two or three weeks. That's the type of stuff that we need to do more of. And that's why it's so imperative that not only are you planning these things in your newsroom long term, but then you're also um, uh, not only that, but sending out the links and sending out the form, excuse me, not the form, but the, uh, the CND budget for enterprise so that we can see these things, so that we can coordinate how we're all working on these projects nationally. We're not trying to take local reporting away from anyone in any way, shape, or form, but it also makes sense to use uh, all of our resources and synergies to make some of these projects the biggest and best that they can possibly be, and then to take your awesome work and push it, push it out through this platform on a national level. When it's something that will will make sense for everyone, why not get it to as many eyeballs as you can possibly get it to? Tyson, you were going to add one more thing. No, that's oh, it. That was it. All right, thank you, folks, and, and thank you very much, Tyson. I think a great presentation, and hopefully all you folks have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, Tyson.